rest, how would you assess day one? Great. Um, just so happy to be back on the floor, practicing, moving around. Uh, we had a good practice, guys. A lot of new information, a lot of new things you're working on coming to this season. So, uh, super exciting day. I know you talked about the importance of building that trust uh, with Coach, obviously, over the summer. When you think of from an overall team standpoint, your experience in this league, when you're trying to put a team together, uh, what's the key to building that chemistry early amongst teammates? Um, just trusting and sacrificing. I think we all come off of summer. Obviously, guys worked out, feeling good about their games. But now you got to do that in the confinement of a team and figure out what's best for the team. And I think as we continue to play with each other, play, um, get some reps, we'll find out what those sacrifices are. Russ, what's different about a Darwin Ham practice than other ones you've had? Uh, you know, it's always great. Um, just a new coach, his energy, um, his determination, his will to just make sure we are locked in on our new schemes and terms. And that's something that I look forward to. Um, I'm just happy to be a part of it. He has a reputation of being like an encore worker. Like he's yeah. a guy who was, was, did you get a lot of that? Was he on the floor with you guys like in, in ways today? Like, yeah, not, not, not like running around and stuff, but oh, he definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely on the court uh, demonstrating a lot of teaching, making sure we understand what we're doing. You know, if we don't, he makes sure that we can you know, figure out how to do it. Ross, you talked a lot last year, various times about wanting higher tempo, a little more speed in games. Um, Darvin's talked a lot about having running habits. Does that kind of align with your view of what the pace of this team should be? Absolutely. What's that? Absolutely. And, and I mean, is that something you're happy to see then, I guess? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ross, even with all the kind of battles you and Pat have with that, what's the early bond that you guys formed so far? Um, I think that's the bond, competing. We understand how to compete, understand um, when we get on the floor, we about our business and understanding what that entails. And um, I mean, that's how you, you're able to connect with somebody that has the same kind of attitude mentality as they get on the floor. Russ, how much of a he, process was it for you to move past the history that you had with the Mets and the No process, man. I'm I'm an easygoing guy. I don't like, hold grudges against anybody. Life is too short, man. We we've been blessed with too many opportunity platforms to walk around and hold grudges and different things of that nature. Um, and I just continue to move forward. Obviously, when I'm on the court, I don't have any friends uh, other than that basketball and the people that's on my team, so I compete as though. Um, but other than that, off the floor, um, you guys don't know, I'm just a normal guy that likes to enjoy, have fun. Um, he's a going guy that likes to help and impact people you know, along my journey. Russ, um, Pat told a story to Allie and, and the rest of the spectrum crew yesterday yeah. that you gave some, some tickets to a yeah. member of his family, and then yeah. also you guys you know, went to pregame chapel together over yeah. the years. Before you guys became teammates, where did you think your, your relationship stood, and did those events stand out to you in terms of you guys changing, you know, kind of your um, perception? Or one I mean, another? to be honest, a lot of those things happen just under nobody, you know, nobody just didn't know about it. I'm oh, sorry about that. Yeah, bro. Thank you. Um, and that's just like I just enjoy doing the right thing, regardless of what I have with somebody, um, you know, his family members, sisters at the game, and that's just the right thing to do. She wants to enjoy the game, and I thought that was a good thing to do, and I just let, let him know that, you know, I was taking care of that for him. Um, and as far as chapel, um, we're in chapel just to give thanks and grace to the abilities and things that we're able to do. Um, and then we go on the floor, it's a different thing, but the mutual respect has always been there. Yes, we've got into it. We've got into it with a lot of other people, but the outside world has made it a lot bigger than it actually is. And, you know, I just continue doing the right thing. And then eventually those stories and those good things will come out like it came out yesterday. And just it on the court, um, all the talk from you and your teammates and the coaching staff that we spoke to defense. Right? Yeah. And Darvin has mentioned several times that your guys' conversations have included you committing to that end. Yeah. How does that look? Like, what are the type of things that you do to, to make a difference? Uh, I don't know what it looks like. Um, just me competing like I always have, playing as hard as I can. Um, I know um, with that there will be mistakes, there will be miscues just like anybody else. Um, my job is to make sure, sorry, um, that I defend at the highest level to make sure that I'm, I'm doing the best I can for my teammates. There's so, a lot. so we saw some referees in here. Do you guys have a scrimmage with referees and have a scrimmage with yourselves? How does how do things change when they're calling stuff versus when you got to um, go and add each other? It just in creates there? mental toughness because there are going to be times in the games where we miss calls. It just creates a game-like mentality of we don't get calls, we got to sprint back, 
when we do setting up our sets, making sure we understand what we're in, um, and it's just crazy that mentality.